Welcome to day two of the cartel.ie Killarney Rally of the Lakes. The Sunday stages are based mainly in the Bear Peninsula and after a wake-up call through Malls Gap, it's into Ireland's Alpine Pass for the torturous Tim Healy Pass. Stunning is the only word to describe the scenery on the Tim Healy Pass. A key stage on this the second day of the Rally of the Lakes. The pass will be tackled twice today, a stretch of road that has been rallied with trepidation over the years. And as the decades rolled by, you could catch an emerging talent like the young Billy Coleman from Mill Street. The beautiful Bear Peninsula also provides us with two classic stages, Cod's Head and Ard Groom, which will be tackled twice today. These are tough tests, with corner after corner there to catch out the unprepared, as the tight strips of tarmac sweep along this dramatic western seaboard. Famous rallying locations which have left lasting memories, like the Russian Borchnik brothers in their BMW, memories from early circuits and more recently, Killarney Rallies of the Lakes. Added to today's schedule is a morning blast up Moles Gap and Kilmacalogue, the final stage. Eight classic stages before the Glen Eagle Hotel finish in Killarney. Overnight, Dara Reardon holds a 39 second lead after Tim McNulty crashed out on stage four. The big focus is on the battle for second place and Eugene Donnelly is just five seconds ahead of Irish Tarmac Championship leader Darren Gass. This battle is crucial for the Irish Tarmac Championship title race. Gary Jennings is fourth and has a convincing Group N lead, but just 13.8 seconds separate National Rally leader Barry Mead and Roy White in what is said to be another great day two battle. So that's the story to date, and as the crew slept in preparation for an even tougher second day, Kalani was in full party mode on the May Bank holiday weekend. Nowhere like the top of the Tim Healy Pass to clear the head, and it's an early 8 a.m. start on the Sunday run. Dara O'Reardon is wide awake and has set fastest time up Mull's Gap before arriving at Tim Healy. With their lead now up to 43.4 seconds, Dara and co-driver Tony McDead could be thinking of easing up a little, but it's quite the reverse. The pair are fastest again, and they extend their lead by a further four seconds. The Cod's Head stage runs right along the Atlantic coastline, Next stop America on your right, and the O'Reardon domination in the S12C Subaru continues. It's fastest time again, this time six seconds faster than anyone else. Dara is in sensational form this morning and strips 12 seconds off his nearest rival in the following Ard Groom stage. And another 12 on Tim Healy too, to command a 1 minute 22.9 second lead by the second Castletown Bear Island service. The only worry being a potential water pressure problem. Eugene Donnelly has more to worry about. Co-driver Paddy Turner is using hand signals to describe the 120 mile an hour plus Mauds Gap turns as the intercom has failed. Still ties on time with gas on this stage, but on Tim Healy, he nearly drops off the road. Indeed, he'll drop four seconds on this stage. His advantage over gas is now just 1.5 seconds. As we hitch a ride over Cod's head, he loses second place to gas, who is four seconds faster. But still, Eugene is pushing this older machine hard on a bone dry road. He's desperate to keep his hopes of a sixth tarmac championship alive. 60 slight left over jump on flat left. 43 left over crest. And it's tight five right. But ill fortune is ahead on the next stage. Ard Groom. The Toyota can't take any more of the torture. And the old piston spells the end of the road for Eugene and Paddy. And five right. Two left. Five left. Titans over crest. She's gone, is she? Something wrong. Eighty. One jump break. Six left. Titans. Darren Gass has been in great form this morning, taking advantage of Eugene's intercom woes to equal his time in the gap and snatch four seconds on Tim Healy with spirited driving like this. Long one left, go, Healy. Fast Eugene Donnelly now out. All Darren needs to do is maintain that second place to further bolster his championship lead. 
The solo back to Breza has been totally reliable all season, and the young Armada driver is making the most of this great opportunity to win Ireland's top rallying ground. Gary Jennings was fourth overnight, but he's backed off a little today to try to preserve his Group N Lancer. Gary needs to win Group N here to secure enough points to enable him to use a WRC car in Donegal. With the bonus points awarded for Group N, he could enter Donegal as Darren Gass's big title threat. This morning, he's had one mechanical drama, however. Yeah, we cracked your breakfast this morning, you know, so we've uh, opted to put on that second handset now just for the last three stages. So, yeah, it's very, very short in a car, and it, you know, especially it's so warm. There's so much grip on these Group N cars, so yeah, we'll back the car back on the anti lagging all as well, just to be safe. Barry Mead is set to move up to third overall, but Roy White closes right in with three stages to go. He's picking away at us, Roy White, you know, he's been picking away all day. He's beaten us on every stage, but by one and two and here and there, like, but uh, here are the three stages to go. I don't, I, I don't know, can we hold them up, but we'll do our best, like. Roy is fastest of the Nationals on all of the morning stages and setting some scorching times, including third fastest overall in our groom and Tim Healy too. Yeah, we start off about 18 behind him, so we have it down now to just over three. So there's three stages left, so it'll be a major push on now to the end. Been really been attacking, but to be fair to Barry, he's really been attacking as well. The two of us are having a right good ding dong. Fergus O'Meara is having a great run over these fabulous stages as Dermot Lynch calls the notes on the opening section of Tim Healy. Don't cut bumpy to left. Party, don't cut it. Bumpy. Party. To one right line. The C Bradley Motorsport car has been pushed all the way and Fergus further consolidates his third place in the national section this morning. Yeah, there's a serious battle by the two boys ahead. Like they're, I think, you know, overall the rally, I think they're third and fourth, you know, to give you an idea of the pace that's up there. So and I think they're breaking the records for the modifieds in the times that they're setting, so we're just staying back a small bit, you know. Yesterday was a bit of a fraught day, we had a lot of problems yesterday, we lost, we had a massive spin in Block Bama, we shouldn't be in the rally at all, we went over the crest backwards about 80 miles an hour on the top of that, and there isn't much room up there, and uh, we caught in, on three stages we caught cars, so, but we lost about 45 seconds of us yesterday, but we're happy to be here today. Ed Murphy and John McCarthy, another local crew, are now 1 minute and 21 seconds behind and lead Class 13 as they power through Tim Healy. But Sam Moffat is well down on par in his car, which is cutting out on the stages. And here on Cod's head, he has Dennis Moynihan rapidly closing in. Sam's rally is soon to be over as the car is withdrawn just after service. There was no acceleration on the car. We actually had a reach in under the ECU and like rattle the plug. Uh, until this car started going and, and even for the next two stages the car went fine but on the road section on the way in here there seemed to be another misfire come into the car so ho hopefully they can get it fixed in here and we'll see what happens. It didn't happen but Dennis Moynihan is a superb fifth of the national and tenth overall with JJ Fleming ninth having moved ahead this morning. JJ and his co-driver Robbie Ward are now really enjoying their WRC Ford Focus. Just watch as the suspension mops up the notorious Tim Healy undulations. Charlie Hickey is just 25 seconds behind his Class 13 rival Dennis Moynihan and a fine 11th overall in the event. Vincent O'Shea and Brian Hickey are drama-free in 12th and set to move up in Group N due to Moffat's misfortune. While John Hickey in the unique Subaru engine four-wheel drive Fubaru is 13th overall and leading class 15. Ken O'Neill is the class 11 leader and 14th overall in the Ford Puma, despite a five-year break from the sport. Former Group N Tarmac champion Gerald Donovan is 15th in his familiar N12 Subaru whilst Kalani's Rob Duggan is a fabulous 16th and second in class 11 on his first Rally of the Lakes. David Carney led the Citroen Racing Trophy overnight but drops to second behind Kieran Daly. But stage 13 is set to be unlucky for Daly as he retires with a broken gearbox, handing the lead back to his male rival. It's all good up front, however, as the leading cars are serviced at Castletown Bear. There's three big stages ahead of us. Uh, hopefully the cars stay going and don't make a mistake. So, uh, I'd say the weather will probably hold out, so just hopefully it will all stay together and we can get to the end and try and keep up a good pace as well, but uh, punch or anything. 
and we're done. Darren is behind us and he's gone hard and he's not giving up either, so we'll have to keep going hard and see what hopefully we'll get to the end. Darren, really tough battle again this morning with Eugene, but we seem to have lost him there. Yeah, he didn't come out of our dream there now. I'm not sure what the problem was, but yeah. Mental, mental pace this morning, so it was. We just got in front of him before that, that stage that he didn't come out of. I think we were two or three seconds in front of him. Like, so it was tight going. Like. There are just three stages to home now, and Darrell Reardon has a clear lead. But there were many hopes dashed this morning, including Eugene Donnelly's. So join us in a moment for the closing stages. Welcome back to the cartel.ie Killarney Rally of the Lakes. Now naturally most of the attention goes to the top runners, but let's spare a thought for the club men and the historics who are fighting their own battles. Amongst the 117 entries there are battles all the way. For local pride, class wins and historic honours. Here things are a little complicated as there are historic and FIA historics. The latter running on wider tires but not counting for tarmac historic points. This Burden's Wesley Patterson is first on the road in his FIA category Escort RS 1800. And with co-driver Marty McGarrity in 202, they open up a substantial 1 minute 18 second lead after the four stages they contested on day one. Kerry's Todd Falvey's gorgeous Porsche 911 is also an FIA category car, which allows those wider racing tyres, and he's second to Wesley in this category. Philip Wiley's Mark I Escort is third overnight and first of the Irish and English specification historics on the narrower tyres. Philip has recently built his Mark I after many successful seasons competing in an MGB. James O'Mahony's Volvo 144S is unusual but effective as he's fourth and leads his class, but he'll retire on the second day. Well, if that wasn't different, Alan Courtney's Porsche 928 certainly is. He and co-driver Paul Souter rumble the big V8 into fifth overnight, playing to the cameras at Paul's Gap and leading Class D4. Jeremiah O'Flynn's Mark I Escort is reminiscent of Roger Clark's 1968 Circuit of Ireland winning car. Declan Jackson has come all the way from the Isle of Man and leads his class. Now for a snapshot of the historic top ten. Tenth. Tyrone's William Todd, first in class with his Cooper S. Ninth, Jack O'Shea in the newer Mini Cooper S. Eighth is Kerry Stephen Coffey, the winner of class C2. Seventh, John Spears, and first in class C4 with his 911. Brendan McAree, sixth and third amongst the FIA category cars. Fifth, Declan Jackson, and first in class D3. Fourth, Alan Courtney, taming that 928 these days. He's second historic and first in his class. And Philip Wiley is the winner of the historics. He had a faultless run in the Mark I Escort. On overall times, the newer FIA category cars are well ahead, with Todd Falvey a fine second, albeit over four minutes behind winner Wesley Patterson in the Escort RS 1800. He explains the FIA rules. You know, they're more or less the same as the other historic cars, except you're allowed to use it with proper racing tyres here. We have restricted in compounds, but no, they, they work pretty well, so they Two days of tailored fun have been enjoyed by all, and the public have poured into the southwest for the annual Killarney Speed Fest. And running is for all, not just the front runners. Many clubmen may never be able to afford a frontline machine, but they are rallying on exactly the same stages as the superstars and pushing their often self prepared cars to the absolute limits. To them, a finish is a major achievement, and a class win is everything. Class 10 winners are Con Mulcahy and Jonathan Keane in their Nimble Nova. And Nola Sullivan, car number 30, finishes his 30th Rally of the Lakes, third in his class. Kieran Marshall, son of the former clerk of the course, Mike Marshall, is eighth in the international field and wins class one. Australian Jason Ulrenshaw is the class 16 winner. And that very healthy sounding Mark 1 Escort is being driven by Con Lucy to class 12 honors. Whilst Kevin Donnelly is the Class 9 winner in the front wheel drive Starlet. Completing the top 20 cars overall are Mike Nelligan and John Hurley. 
Tony and Breed Murphy from Limerick took second in class 14 and 19th place in the overall times. And Kevin O'Connor claims 18th and second Citroen Trophy runner after his day one dramas. Whilst Kilkenny's Joe Connolly clinches 17th spot and first in class 14. David Carney is delighted to take the Citroen Trophy honours in 16th and a €3,500 winner's cheque. Cork's Cal McCarthy is 15th and 3rd in Class 11. And it's been a great weekend for Rob Dugan with co-driver Mike Galvin, who claims 14th and 2nd in his class. Ken O'Neill's Puma Super 1600 holds together to record a fine 13th and 1st in Class 11 whilst John Hickey's home-engineered Fubaru is 12th and 1st in Class 15. Ken Mayer's Vincent O'Shea is the second Group M finisher and 11th overall. And Charlie and John Hickey complete the top 10 on our 3rd in Class 13 after an excellent run in their Mark II. 20 seconds ahead are Dennis Moynihan and Eamon Hayes in that glorious Mark I. And JJ Fleming is eighth in a very different generation of Ford. With Kalani's Ed Murphy and John McCarthy seventh and class 13 winners. Fergus O'Meara and Dermot Lynch are still maintaining their third place in the national rally and sixth place overall as they power over the glorious Ardgroom stage. It is seven left. It's your seven left from the up twisty. Twisty 200 out of it all the way to the graveyard. That's one landmark that they will be happy to have passed. The Sea Bradley Motorsport car has run faultlessly all weekend as Fergus descends the hair raising back section of our groom. Three here now, into four right over big jump, and two right over bump, into four left. Four, and one right 80 to two right, into two left Twisty 100. All the way to the pole. Sixth overall and third in the national is a great award for an entertaining weekend, which has seen plenty of hard work in the cockpit of the 2.4 escort. Into three right king, four left, three right king. Thank you for the entertainment all weekend, boys. But how did you get away with that Ballock Bemis spin? For Gary Jennings and co driver Barry McNulty, who was drafted in just hours before the start, it's been the weekend they'd hoped for. As they work hard on the final run over the right tortuous over twists of Cod's right head. Wipe out left over bump 60, right 40, breaking for fast square left, Titans. Fast five right Titans go, 40 up. Fast five left, fast four right and narrow and left continues into wipe out. Thankfully, no wipeouts this weekend. They may have backed off, but they still nearly run out of road at our camera point and our groom. It's on past Kilmacalogue Harbour as they speed towards the finish to take a maximum haul of group end points and move into second place overall in the Tarmac Championship. Yeah, it's definitely give us a great boost, you know, to get um, good points here and, and bonus points as well. So, yeah, at least the championship is very exciting for us. There's a, a deal being put together as we speak, you know, it's just not finalised. So, yeah, it's luck like hopefully we'll have a WRC car for Donegal. But, yeah, you know, it's promised to happen so many years before and it, and it never happened. So, yeah, we'll have our fingers crossed for that. Roy White had got ahead in that frantic national rally race between him and Barry Mead. Mechanical glitches have relegated Roy to second place. We're having a right good cut on our groom and uh, went around a right-hander, the car just cut out. So like, oh, on the buttons, on the buttons, she eventually fired up again. Three miles later, around another right-hander, stopped again, on the buttons, on the buttons, started her up just as so we started her. Uh, Barry went by, so at that stage uh, we knew the, the rally was curtains, but you know, fair play to Barry, drove a great race and uh, we enjoyed fighting with him all weekend. She says we're 10 down and we got seven back in Cod's head. Next one we came on, uh, Roy is stuck in the middle of the road. He's cast off. Grand job. We motored the way out to the end of the stage. Didn't, didn't take any risks. Coming off that stage, the car was a bit smoky, but 
We got into Nick, we went into the last stage with 28 seconds and we just tipped away through and geez, Roy did take 20 back on us but uh, here was a six, six, uh, six mile stage so we just tipped away and delighted to be here of course. Second overall and ahead of the national runners is Darren Gass who's had a great weekend in his S10 Subaru as he powers up stage 13, Tim Healy passed to. <laughs> And as Sherry on the pace notes, it's been another excellent weekend as the 23-year-old has shown a new maturity this season. His Irish Tarmac Championship lead is now looking very healthy at the halfway point as the series heads for the fourth round in Donegal. There's a breath of fresh air at the top of the Tarmac series with three young drivers figuring so prominently in the results this year. Dara O'Reardon, Gary Jennings and Darren Gass. Delighted with the result, couldn't ask for any better. And delighted for Dara, he drove a great rally and fair play to him. You know, some of his times were unbelievable, like happy for him, but no, it's a good result for us for the championship and we'll try and continue on with it, hopefully. For Dara O'Reardon and Tony McDade, it's their third Irish tarmac win and second in a row in Killarney. The Subaru S12C has performed perfectly and Killarney seems to suit the make as it's the 13th time a Subaru has won here. The mum and dad are there to view their son sailing towards a memorable victory. It's, uh, it's just it is unbelievable to be here the second year, I can't believe it. I couldn't believe it the first year, but uh, no, uh, Tony done a great job, team done a great job, with a couple of problems with the car, everyone pulled together, got it sorted. Delighted. Great rally, organised well and everyone done a great job. With a lot of pressure from Darren behind us today and Eugene Danley and the team went out unfortunately on Saturday so it was a pity but um, no, we would keep the pace up today and no, just delighted to be here now. Dara is fast establishing himself as the big find in Irish rallying in the last two seasons. But for Darren, 20 points is a nice lead to take into the second half of the championship. But it's far from over. It's been a big success for the Killarney and District Motor Club, who've run a quality event with a quality entry in very difficult times and brought large numbers to the Kingdom of Kerry. It's a credit to Clark of the Course Dermot Healy and his team. One stage ran two minutes late, out of the 16 stages, everyone 15 ran bang on time, so that's a good rally to me. Next on the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship, we move to my home county for the Topaz Donegal International Rally. And RPM will be bringing you three programmes from the hills. Now that is something to look forward to.